So our first speaker um, is a familiar face within the South African citizen science community. Um, it's Susan Gee. And Sue has been a keen contributor to the Virtual Museum for over 10 years now. Um, and more recently, she's brought her voice and her enthusiasm further into the VDI citizen science community um, by hosting a series of bio bashes, which are just intense weeks of citizen science data collection um, on Oberg Private Nature Reserve, which is which is the, the farm that she and her husband own in the Little Karoo here in South Africa. Um, so Sue obtained her BSc honours in zoology and geography from the University of Cape Town. And she started her career teaching in natural sciences and geography, and then later in life um, returned to the world of academia um, to complete a master's degree in wildlife management with the University of Pretoria. And Sue describes herself as a wife, mother, teacher, and traveler. Um, she enjoys using citizen science, not only as a means of um, recording what she sees, but also of connecting with people and with nature in really meaningful ways. And she now divides her time between managing Oberg in South Africa and exploring, um, often as a citizen scientist, um, within continental Africa and beyond. And over several years of repeated visits and stays, the Seychelles have become a second home for Sue and her husband Richard. And tonight, Sue's going to be speaking to us about um, these remarkable islands um, through the lens of citizen science, um, demonstrating the, the challenges of sustainable management in the Seychelles, as well as the potential for citizen science projects there. And she's also going to be showcasing a bit of the incredible local biodiversity um, through records curated in the Virtual Museum. So Sue, it is wonderful to have you speaking to us tonight, especially about a place that is so close to your heart. So we're very keen to hear what you have to say. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little, oh dear, no, why won't it be very nice if it would, there we go, um, give you a little overview of um, how, yeah, you know, how much of, um, how much data is in the virtual museums um, um, curated by the BDIs, the Biodiversity and Development Institute and the, and the Animal Demography Unit um, at UCT. Um, yeah, so the Seychelles are just the, the most incredible set of islands. Um, I haven't been to every single, obviously, tropical island around the world, but I just, I just can't even imagine anything um, as beautiful as, as these islands with a very, very fascinating biogeography. Okay, so this is just a little intro. Um, this is Pralin Island, um, the famous beach, um, Anselasio. And you can see the, the typical sort of bay-like structure, the beautiful crystal blue waters, um, indicative of the equatorial region that it's found in, and these granitic <clears throat> um, mountainous islands that form part of the inner islands. So basically how I'm, I've structured the, the, the talk, um, as I'll talk briefly about the biogeography um, of the Seychelles Islands, um, so where it's located and just why um, I'm talking about the Seychelles um, in terms of that it has an African connection, which many people don't actually realize. Um, then I'll be giving a brief overview of the Seychelles records in the virtual museum. And I'll outline one or two little points about the challenges to improve record contributions um, to, um, for, in, for the Seychelles, obviously, in particular. And then, yeah, the best part, the personal highlights of being a citizen scientist in paradise. So just there, I know there's some people listening who don't really know what a virtual museum is. So just very, very briefly, um, it is basically like a museum, but in, in, in computers and in, oh my word, in clouds and all sorts of things. And basically, instead of having real specimens stuffed, you have, photo in this case, um, they have photographic records. And the virtual museums um, curated by the BDI and uh, the ADU um, inclu are, include odonata, which are dragonflies and lace wings, birds, mammals, scorpions, spiders. So it's divided into sort of groups um, of different kinds of mostly fauna, but also a couple of, of flora. 
Um, and then you can, that data is then used mostly to develop um, um, distribution maps of various species and try and keep it up, and up to date. And therefore trying to, from that you can also deduce or find out if how animals and plants even are, are moving, especially now um, due to anthropogenetic human changes. There we go. Okay, so let's have a quick look at um, the biogeography of the beautiful Seychelles archipelago. Okay, so island nation, um, and they are located, here we go, they are located east coast of Africa in the western Indian Ocean, um, just north of Madagascar. Um, they lie just below the equator, um, between about 3 and 10 degrees south, and between 45 and 60 degrees east. So in terms of um, its extent, it's absolutely massive. Um, so the oceanic extent um, of the marine zone is about 1.4 million kilometers squared. To put that into a little bit of perspective, South Africa has an area of 1.2 million kilometers squared. The terrestrial land in, in Seychelles is only about 455 square kilometers. So not, not very big in that sense. The Seychelles islands are divided into two main groups. You have the inner islands, which are predominantly granitic based. And um, I'm telling you shortly how that it's the, these islands are some of the old, or probably the oldest um, granitic islands in the world. Um, of those inner islands, there are 43 of them. Um, um, only two of them are not granitic, and that is Bird Island and Dennis, and they are both coralline islands. Bird being the northernmost island uh, piece of land in the Seychelles. Then the rest of the islands are divided into five groups, um, situated south, um, pretty predominantly south of um, the inner islands. They're all coralline. Um, uh, formed on sea mounts. Um, so you have the Amarantes group, Alphonse group, Southern Coral, Coral group, Farquhar and Aldabra groups. Um, yeah, so I'm sure most of you have heard about um, Aldabra. Still haven't been there one day. We will get there. Um, then to um, just understand a little bit of why Seychelles is included in the um, the virtual museums that we are talking about tonight um, is that it is indeed part of Africa. There's Madagascar, Seychelles is located here. So it's situated on the Somali subplate, which is part of the African um, tectonic plate. It um, was part of Gondwana, the ancient um, uh, um, uh, sort of almost supercontinent, um, quite a few million years ago. Um, which and Gondwana started splitting about 180 million years ago. Um, yeah, and then over time, um, with the moving of the plates, um, so the land masses moved and there was rising of sea levels and sinking of sea levels and volcanic action, et cetera, et cetera. And eventually the, um, the Seychelles um, microcontinent, as it's referred to in the literature, um, when it, it became submerged, partially submerged, and it split from India. So to, to where its location is now. The climate of Seychelles is definitely equatorial. Um, so you have nice consistent um, air temperatures throughout the year. So you don't have a, a true summer and winter and aut you don't have autumn and spring. Um, so you have the two main monsoon seasons. You have the Northwest Trades, which we have just exited literally in the last week or so. The, we've had a switch um, in the weather completely. Um, so it went from um, this picture here, which I took uh, two, two weeks ago, um, from Pralin. Um, so you have these beautiful still days, very sunny. You get these thunder, thunderstorms, um, quite a lot of rain. So the rainiest time of the year is actually in, uh, during the Northwest Trades. And, and so this picture here with all the rain was also taken from the same place a couple of days later. Um, so it's not, yeah. So you do get obviously lots of 
rain in the southeast trade, um, but you get the wind with it. Um, and it's, it's um, well, for us, if you're living here, it's significantly cooler. Um, but other standards, probably not significant. Um, right. So then if we look at the, just a sort of a general overview of the flora of the Seychelles, um, being equatorial, you would immediately think jungle, which does occur. So on the, on the granitic islands, um, you have um, these thick um, um, forests. Um, so you have sort of mid, mid altitude and sort of lower altitude forests. So th these granitic islands are very, very um, small. So, and steep. So you have this narrow little coastal plain, so to speak, and then straight away you have these um, um, mountains. Um, the highest uh, peak is uh, in the region of 900 meters um, um, high, and it's here on Mahe. Um, so it's, they're, they're, un, they're not particularly high compared to other places in the world, but it's, it's certainly high enough. So you have incredible plant biodiversity, and that is also it's very, very interesting, and I know almost zero about it, but it, it is fascinating because um, of the fact that Seychelles was part of Gondwana and has a, therefore a continental influence. There are plants and certain insect species and everything that are have ancient, ancient origins. Um, obviously, Seychelles is famous for the coca de mer, which is the biggest seed in the world. That's the, 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 the female part, and that is the male kakin um, of the, of the um, coca de mer. And here, here, this is on the side there, there's a picture of a coca de mer palm. The fauna of the Seychelles is quite diverse, but low mammal um, diversity that's probably connected to the, um, um, the point at which Seychelles, um, that, that, that sort of area um, moved away from um, Gond uh, Gondwana or continental areas, um, I would imagine. Um, so mostly, so two species of bat and then uh, marine mammals, so dolphins, whales, and used to be dugongs, Possibly, I, I heard, but I'm not 100% sure if dugongs have um, started returning to some of the uh, southern islands. I'm not 100% sure. I think in Aldabra there's some. I stand to be corrected. Um, then there's a, the marine life uh, is hugely diverse. It is under huge uh, pressure though now because of coral bleaching. So the reefs around here have taken huge strain with um, rising um, uh, and spikes in sea temperatures and it has decimated the corals. Um, we've been coming to the Seychelles now for about 10, 12 years and we there is a marked difference from the first time we came to, to, to the present day. It's another reason why it's, well, citizen science care can be is, is of great importance, I think. Um, we have spiders, various crabs, reptiles are, are quite diverse. I never, yeah, I don't even, yeah, it's the other people know much more about all the insects that occur here, which, um, yeah, we feel most of the time. Okay, so looking at the Seychelles records in the virtual museums. So this is um, put together a little table um, um, going through the data that occurs in the, the virtual museums. So in this column here are all the different um, uh, museums where photographs of these particular groups of organisms are curated. So for example, if we look at bird pics, and unsurprisingly, because birds are sort of an obvious thing around here, um, the most um, species that are, locate, are found uh, that are curated in the museum are of birds. So between, if you look at um, bird pics and then phone, which is um, looks at um, the weaver groups of birds. Um, um, interestingly, lace wings, um, although there are not that many records per se, 10 species have been identified. Um, if we go across to looking at the total number of records, so that's a total number of basically photographs or yeah, actual individual records of a sighting 
um, that are posted in the, rec in the, in the um, museum. So Bird, Bird Picks is clearly the winner. It's 213 records um, um, and 40 species um, are, 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 uh, make up that 213 records. Um, then we have the reptile map, um, which has 42 records. Um, which is also not too bad, but I mean, they're short, they're everywhere. So you would expect, I would have expected a few more records of reptiles. Um, then also here, the phone, that's um, thanks to um, researchers like Dita, who have visited the Seychelles um, quite often. And um, they are, and Dita specializes in weavers. So there are lovely records, mini records of weavers in the Seychelles. The Odonata, the dragonflies and the damselflies, also have a, a, quite a few records, so that's quite interesting. Then this column shows the ID pending. In other words, those there are records um, in the museum, but a specialist has not been able to identify um, that species um, for sure yet. Um, and what is interesting is here, if you look at LepiMap, which is of butterflies and moths, and if you look at all the records of, in LepiMap, every single one of them, I think, when I last looked, were all moths, um, but they have not been identified to species yet. So um, um, that, would, that would be quite nice. I am on the quest to get a butterfly on, and I have not been able to pho photograph it yet. They don't sit still for longer than about five milliseconds. So it's like, for me, it's almost impossible. Then also, um, the Odonata, there are 21 IDs pending. Um, so th this sort of also comes back to, or leads forward to some of the challenges associated with um, virtual museum um, specimens from countries that in, in this case are not in, in South Africa where, where the virtual museum is hosted. And it's possibly, you know, having um, people that are able to um, identify some of these species, also especially from photographs. It's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to do. I'm not going to talk about the, um, the number of quarter degree cells um, um, with records. So if you look at a topographical, well, at a map um, with Latin long, latitude and longitude indicated on it, um, we can divide um, the areas up into quadrats. Um, and um, that is how the data pretty much is summarized within um, um, the virtual museums. So in the Seychelles, because of its huge oceanic extent, it extends over 43 grid cells. So that's quite massive. Um, and if you look at um, where all the records are being um, recorded, this grid cell, 355 CA, that is Bird Island. Um, so 18 species have been recorded there, um, over 36 records. Um, it's mostly birds, and they're mostly from me. And that, that data um, from Bird Island, um, I think um, if you look at the median um, date on it, in other words, it's an indicator of how recent and how up-to-date the records are, these records are quite up-to-date. The next one down, 0355 DC, that is Dennis Island. So Dennis Island is um, inhabited. There are people living on the island. It is private. You can only come in there as a tourist if you um, fly in, pretty much. Um, so we can sail there, but we're not allowed ashore. Um, and it only has one record, which is really, really sad. And potentially this is an area that you could get lots of records from because it is also a favorite place, one of the favorite place for birds to roost and nest. Then this one, 0455BA is a reed. And a reed is sometimes called the Cadbury's Island. It was owned by Mr. Cadbury at some point. And it is now uh, looked after by um, a conservation um, society. Um, and um, it's always, you, it's difficult to access. You can only, as, as a tourist, you can only get there really in the Northwest monsoon because um, it's very difficult to land on the shore there. Um, but again, because 
there are not many citizen scientists visiting there. There are so few records, which is sad because it's 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 got a really, really special and endemic species which are protected on that island. Then these two um, are of um, include Pralin, which is the second biggest island. And another sort of issue or challenge um, that I see here is that this, uh, this quarter degree cell includes um, the major part of Pralin, but it also includes the two islands, Kuzan and Kuzin. Now, Kuzan and Kuzin are both reserves. One's private and the other one's run by Nature Seychelles. Um, and so a lot of the records here um, that are here are, on, are from definitely from Kuzan Island, um, especially uh, bird records, like Dita, some ringing records and so on. And um, so I, I wonder if, if with those quarter degree cells, if one actually needs to have it on a smaller scale because the habitats are different between those small islands and the bigger one, although it's in the same quarter degree cell. And BD includes um, Ladig, so it's the other side of Pralin, and um, Ladig, and Ladig again also has its own set of species like it has the Seychelles, uh, the um, Seychelles um, Paradise Flycatcher. Um, then these ones here, one, two, three, and this one at the bottom here, are all form part of Mahe. So Mahe straddles four um, quarter degree grid cells sort of in, in their corners, so to speak, um, and also includes the other little associated islands associ um, next to Mahe. So Mahe um, definitely has the most records that you can see quite, quite clearly. Um, this one here in the middle, with, in, in the yellow lines, that's Frigat Island. It has um, lots of, relatively speaking, a high number of records and also a high number of species uh, recorded. And that is thanks to um, uh, mostly, I think, visiting scientists who have been doing, uh, I think, also mostly birders, I suspect, although they have recorded other species in the museum. Um, so that would explain um, those nice records there. Um, then these two in between the purple lines are the two um, quarter degree cells around Aldabra. And um, yeah, that just looks so sad. And Aldabra we know has a huge variety of very interesting species, some that are permanently there and some that move through during the migration season. The last uh, quarter degree cell is a very um, remote island uh, called Koetavi and apparently very, very difficult record. And I, I think that's actually an historical record and there actually isn't a photograph of it. And I think it's of a dragonfly. So that's just looking at it in a, in a, in a different way, it's looking at the proportion of records. So Mahe, but if you look at that, um, if I summarize, if I push the, the um, quarter degree thing, uh, locations together. So Mahe, definitely the greatest proportion of records. Um, La Digue, Frigat um, are, the, are the biggest. Then Bird Island, and then Aldabra has just so few, and that's just um, definitely needs improvement. Okay, so the, some of the one hit, one, one record wonders, I've mentioned Coverty, and the other one, which is, on, which is on Dennis Island, which just blows my mind, there's one record, and that is of a swift turn. Um, um, so that, that must be a place we can definitely improve the situation. Then if we look at all the, the virtual museums in, um, yeah, the one thing that really surprised me, I just don't know why I didn't think of it, is, is that the dung beetles here. Coming from Africa, you just think of elephant poop and big dung beetles. And yeah, there are very few mammals here. So yeah, um, that, these are, I think we are yeah, both thanks to Dita who, who uh, so these I presume are both taken on, maybe one frigate, I don't know about the other one. So that was quite a surprise. Then just, just another one that I, I really think could, um, it, it, yeah, I know I've got a whole lot of photographs that I still need to upload um, to, to Reptile Map because the reptiles are, 
are, are quite special in the Seychelles. You have the giant Aldabra um, tortoise. So, um, so it's, I believe that one of the biggest, well, this is one of the biggest uh, tortoises in the world, um, apart from some of the Galapagos tortoises, tortoise species. Um, you have these beautiful um, um, day geckos, um, and there are some occur um, across uh, many of the islands and some are specific to certain islands. Um, so that's quite interesting. You have the different skinks um, and like the one is the right skink, which uh, I think maybe this one I'm trying to remember. I photographed it on Kuzan Island or oh, memory. And um, that, that apparently doesn't do well when there are rats around. So to have records of these kinds of species is, would be really, really important. So there are, you know, the red listed species are the turtles, so the hawksbill turtles and green turtles and, and both um, uh, breed um, on various islands um, in the Seychelles. Mammal map, as I mentioned, there are not too many um, mammal species um, in the Seychelles. So you have two in, um, endemic bat species. The one is the famous flying fox, Seychelles flying fox, and the other one, um, is a sheath-tailed bat, which is a, an insectivore, of which there are no records to date. Um, then the other um, records are only of the bottlenose dolphins. There are spinner dolphins and other species of dolphins. There are whales, and, um, and then there are also introduced and um, alien uh, mammals like fabulous rats um, and, um, and little little interesting little creature, like a spiky skin that looks like a ratty hedgehog thing from Madagascar called a tenrec. It also a hair, which uh, was it a black naped hair, if I remember correctly, on Kazan, Kazan, and I don't know where else it occurs. So, yeah. Um, so I've mentioned some of the challenges to how to improve records um, in the Seychelles. So we just have to see them as little mini hurdles, not challenges somehow. Um, so obviously where, where it is located. So um, it's, it's not necessarily the cheapest and the easiest place um, to, to get to firstly. Um, and then once you are here to get between islands, um, I know it can be quite costly because um, you either have to fly or go by, or go by boat. Um, but I think the main factor here is basically um, awareness. Um, people don't really necessarily know about um, citizen science, whether it's our VMs that we are talking about particularly tonight or about um, other citizen science projects um, that are around. And I, I'm pretty sure that um, there are many organizations in the Seychelles um, like small organizations and big ones like SACAT and so on that are engaging with citizens and are using citizen science in a variety of ways. But I, I, I truly believe that there is a big gap here where um, RVMs can play a big role in contributing towards baseline data and collection of data. If we can tap into the people that live here um, that know where things are and um, yeah, just it's, you know, just understand because they live here. And then the other one is tapping into the tourists who are snapping things all the time. So, um, in, well, we'll toss the selfies, but otherwise all the other things um, and wanting to know what, what organisms are. So I, somehow if we could find a way to tap into that, that would be wonderful. And then I've also mentioned identification is of possibly some of the endemic species, especially maybe the dragonflies and the moths, I suppose. I don't know. Um, that might be an issue or something that we need to address. And then, yeah, and then in terms of once one has got the data um, that is usually hidden is the actual GPS uh, point where, where that particular photograph was taken. Um, um, yeah, so in order to produce the distribution maps um, on a quarter degree cell, uh, quarter degree grid cell basis, that might be uh, too much of a coarse scale. Um, all right, then the fun part, the personal highlights. 
Um, so we've been coming here for about uh, 10 or 11 years. And um, my mission eventually when I started getting seriously into birding was to see the endemic species of Seychelles. And one of them was the Seychelles kestrel, which you could see often on Mahe. I hadn't seen it at that point um, because we were mostly on a boat. We wouldn't have a house here yet. And um, I was cycling around La Digue um, and I'd just gone to see, I was already in my element because I'd just seen the, the paradise fly catchers. And all of a sudden I see this bird sitting up there and it was next to the school on a solar panel. I thought, okay, that is, that must be a kestrel. But, but on La Digue, I had read that they had not recorded um, kestrels there for a couple of years. Anyway, so I took the photographs and I sent it off to the Seychelles Bird Records Committee who, who curate as well. Um, sightings of um, birds, especially vagrants, and, new, you know, and, and then they will decide when a bird is, is a new species or not to the Seychelles. Um, yeah, and it was the third official record of the kestrel on La Digue, um, which was thought at some point to have been exterminated from the island. So that was very cool. Then um, being able to see um, nesting Hawksbill turtles. This is on Bird Island. We saw them two years ago and I saw one nesting again last year, laying her eggs. That is just, yeah, it's no words. Um, for those that have experienced it, you'll understand it's a very, very special thing. Um, and all the work and the research that is going on around those as well. Then this couple of weeks ago, at last, officially, I've got to see the Seychelles black parrot, which occurs on Pralin. It does also fly across to Curieux Island, uh, but apparently it doesn't actually stay there, but it just flies across the island to feed and then comes back. So this was taken in the um, Valle de Mai um, UNESCO World Heritage Site Reserve. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous birds and incredible uh, conservation efforts going to protect I think there are only something like 900 birds total left. Um, then the Seychelles, these are the different pigeons and doves. I didn't put in the rock pigeon because we all know about those. So you get the Seychelles blue pigeon. This is the Madagascar uh, turtle dove and these are with a little cluster of zebra or, or um, yeah I call them zebra doves um, that are sitting in our garden. So here are the Fodies, or two species of Fodies that occur in the Seychelles. So here you have the Madagascar Fodie, or Red Fodie, I think it's also called. And this is the very special Seychelles Fodie. Um, also occurs, uh, is highly protected, endemic bird, found on, definitely on Kazan, because that's when I, where I found it. I think it's also on a reed. And this is a Seychelles Warbler, um, also um, um, on the red list very special endemic. Um, then, yeah, very, very beautiful birds the, um, and very dynamic. Um, and they don't sit still for long at all. The little Seychelles Paradise flycatchers on La Digue. These were uh, photographed in the Verve um, Little Reserve, which they have created. Um, so they're like a certain kind of um, habitat. Um, and the trees, I think, are important. They also need water. Um, so they have special, like special bird baths um, for, for these birds to, and um, to encourage them to nest. Then this is the Seychelles magpie robin, um, which was highly endangered. Only a few birds left at one stage. And this has been literally brought back from extinction. extinction. Uh, it really is a, a great bird. And uh, these, I think, are photographed, well, definitely ones on Kazan, the other one might be on from a reed. Um, then just before COVID, so two years ago, um, I went with a bird guide um, on Mahe. And um, at long last, I got to see the Seychelles white eye. So another endemic that is in serious, serious trouble found here it's, is, is on Mahe, right in, the, right in the, the top parts of Mahe in the forested areas. And there's some amazing um, dragonflies. 
um, I just I just find them incredibly difficult to photograph. So, um, but they are fun, and um, it's great trying to citizen science them too. And is my one and only moth so far that I've managed to photograph that was on Bird Island. I've still got to put that, I think, on. Then a talk in the Seychelles wouldn't be complete without, for me, the iconic, um, what we call a fairy turn, in other words, a white turn. Um, it's just magnificent, the white plumage and this beautiful blue black bill, a black eye. And these poor chicks that are just basically brought up with no nest, you just see an egg on, the, on a tree, stump tree branch. And that's how they grow up. Um, and just watching them feed, yeah, beautiful birds. Um, then some of the other um, amazing birds that come either that uh, stay in the Seychelles or move um, according to the monsoons between, uh, between the northern and the southern parts of, um, and east and western parts of the Indian Ocean or further afield, so the migrants. But um, yeah, so Seychelles is known for its beautiful sooty terns. And a very important breeding colony is on Bird Island. This is a, um, a tropical shearwater, it used to be called Audubon's shearwater, one of the frigates, one of the noddies, I think it's a less. Uh, and we have a, a little group of quite a few little um, green estriated herons that um, are living in our, our yacht basin here. This is taken sitting on our boat. So that's about it. I could talk for hours, um, but I'll stop now. So some little crab plovers uh, leaving us from Bird Island. And that's Bird Island. Thank you very much. <laughs>